worthy to be praised. As we go further into this service, it's our pleasure, extreme pleasure, to have some of our civic elected, elected and appointed leaders in our midst, people that we have esteemed very highly through the years. We have representing the mayor of Detroit, the Honorable Coleman A. Young, Mr. Henry Haygood, who is the executive assistant to Mayor Young, and he's the director of economic development. Stand up, Bill Haygood. I have known his father for years. I was introduced to his father by the late brother Ozzy Heath many years ago. We were doing some work here, and he was introduced uh, to, I was introduced to Brother Hager. And guests with him, we're glad to have it. Don't have your names, but we're glad to have those that are with Mr. Hager. Oh, I'm sorry. And the first district of which we are a part of, very proudly, of the United States Congress, we have the Honorable John Conyers, Jr., one of the finest in Washington, representing us and speaking loudly on issues that are very important to us, the author of the Martin Luther King Holiday. Come on, y'all, give him a hand. Yeah. And many other very important things. From the United States Senate, the Honorable Carl Levin, who was a former Detroit City Council President, elected to the United States Senate 13 years ago, and by the way, the announcement was made from right here at the Temple, where he got his start. He's a resident of the city of Detroit. He was married here in 1961 in the then Ahakam <laughs> Synagogue that they built for us, and we bought it in 1979 years later. And then six years later, we paid for it, burned the mortgage. Senator Carl Levin. We can fill in these seats ushers as quickly as possible if we have the people. I told you a few weeks ago, therefore we've been covered here by Channel 2, as you see, this is newsworthy. We break into this. I told you a few days ago that I had something good to tell you, and everybody's been wondering, what has he got to say? And everybody thought that I was a broke down refrigerator because I almost told it last Sunday night. I kept getting so close. And uh, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to announce it then. And the devil sure didn't want me to announce it because I, I came down with this condition Thursday morning. And folks called me from. Akron to make sure that I'm here today. They wanted to hear me preach and whatever. I told them, yes, they called before Thursday. And they said, we're bringing down 13 people from Akron. And Lord, on yesterday I said, Lord, these people come in here today and I, I'm not able. But the Lord fixed it and I got here. Yeah. Strep throat and all, I'm here. <laughs> But uh, thanks be to God. And uh, I didn't really want to let you know that I was throwing my hat in the ring for President of the United States. When Mr. Kerry backed out, <laughs> Thought it was time for somebody to back in, but but uh, I've decided against that too. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad? Amen. 
I'm having a time being president of Greater Grace Temple. <laughs> I certainly don't want to be president of nothing else. <laughs> this is enough. This is plenty. And furthermore, in all seriousness, this is what God called me to do. And I shall stay here and never intend to run for any public office. Praise the Lord. Anything that I'm appointed to whereby I can help in some committee in some way, I don't mind, but I'm not running to be elected to any public office. My hands and my arms are full, so thank God. But very seriously today, we have these fine people here to make an announcement and let you know what Greater Grace Temple have been blessed to accomplish. And I think I should turn this over to the senator from the United States Senate, Carl Levin. Bishop, uh, it is always great being with you. Uh, God's been good to me, too. And uh, he's been good to all of us here in Detroit because we have the Greater Grace community and Bishop Ellis leading it. You know, the United States government has a way of uh, wasting money sometimes. And Lord knows, Lord knows that we spend money on some foolish things, on missiles and bombs and things we don't need. But once in a while we spend, spend some money on things that we need critically. We've got kids that we've got to educate. We've got housing that we need, particularly for our seniors. We've got a health care system that isn't working right. We've got to give everybody universal health care in this country. But today, Congressman Conyers and Henry Haygood, representing the mayor, and I are here because it's a special treat to help kick off the 30th anniversary of Bishop Ellis and Mrs. Ellis being pastors. As the bishop said, I was married in this edifice. I was married 31 years ago here, so I don't look that old, I know, but I... <laughs> I was married 31 years ago here, and I was just hoping my wife could be here, but her mother is not well, so she could not join me here today. But John Conyers and Henry Haygood and I are here today to give a special kickoff to a project that you have been working on. And I give credit to you, not to us. You've been working on. You've got a, a campus, and you've been dreaming about putting some housing for the elderly on that Greater Grace Temple campus. And because of your work, the United States government, Department of Housing and Urban Development has just announced a grant of $5.3 million to you.
membership, this is the biggest check and the most deserved check we've ever presented. It's a real pleasure to kick off your 30th anniversary year this way. God bless you. What a Sunday morning. And what a way to celebrate the 30th anniversary, isn't it? We're talking about 89 units of housing for low-income senior citizens further out there on Seven Mile Road. And do you know what? This was one of the last Section 202 grants to come out of Washington before President Bush closed the door down on some more important legislation. We just got under the wire. But But what is absolutely critical is that we continue the relationship that Bishop Ellis and Reverend Ellis have started here in the church in the coordination with our city, our federally elected officers. This is so important to us because we're trying to make America work in Washington, D.C. And it means creating jobs. It means rebuilding America. It means developing our infrastructure. It means getting our trade policies right. It also means getting our civil rights and our constitutional rights in order. There are a lot of forces of evil out there. And this campaign that's coming up in November is an incredible one because some people are being divided by race, and we should be pulled together by the suffering that's going on all throughout America. You know, four years ago, we were talking about Reagan Democrats, but you can't find them now because th they've hit everybody. There's unemployment going on in the white collar area, in the suburbs, there's unemployment. They begin to find out that it wasn't just for us, it's for everybody. And we've got to turn this country around. And the only way we can do it is not just with the voices of Senator Levin and myself and Barbara Rose Collins, but it's got to be done by the voices of the American people, and that's shown by us exercising that important right to vote. Please vote for somebody on March 17th when we have the presidential preference. If you don't like anybody, write me in as a favorite son candidate. I will, Bishop Ellis. I will. If you don't, if you got a candidate, fine. If you don't have a candidate, don't, don't use that as an excuse not to participate. So let's keep America strong, and it starts with our churches and the people in them. And I'm so happy to be here on this wonderful day to celebrate your 30th anniversary. Thank you very much. Good morning, and uh, praise the Lord. The mayor wanted to be here with you uh, this morning, uh, Bishop, but uh, he's working on the budget today. As you know, the city is in for a hard time. But the mayor wanted uh, you to know, uh, Bishop, that even in hard times, he realizes that the city has a blessing. Amen. And you're definitely one of the city's major blessings. You know, the mayor speaks in very plain language. 
<laughs> so I won't say everything he said, but he said, you know that, that, that bishop, when he starts something, he finishes something. <laughs> so thank you for finishing this. I think one thing that was missed in the presentation that we're talking about a $5 million grant. That's right. <laughs> and that's significant. And uh, I think that, that that's a blessing that this is not a loan right. from the government. This is a grant. Bishop takes care of his people. <laughs> so I just want to uh, congratulate you on your 30th anniversary and Charles for the, for the hard work and, and uh, we're certainly going to stand behind you and I know you're going to knock on my door for a little help with this and, and we are committed to do whatever we can to add a little more to this pot. Officials a hand as they exit the room, give them a standing ovation. Brother Kanye has just left a speaking engagement at 10 o'clock this morning another civic affair but he did make it here in time now you know I'm ecstatically happy the city of David phase one is on his way didn't know it was going to work out just quite like that but God did it if God be for you if God be for you if God be for you <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I want to bring it home to those who help so readily here to help this. I don't want to leave out anybody. Passes there, please. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Sister Fran Carter, one of our directors, who typed and typed and typed and typed. Stand up, Fran. Way in the back. She likes the background there. Please stand till the camera finds you there. Keep standing. Give Sister Fran a hand. She typed and typed and typed and typed and typed. Y'all don't know how much typing this took. Here the, here's the booklet. I want the camera to get a shot of this booklet. This book here, the, all types of literature and the answers and things in there that had to be typed. Sister Fran Carter did that typing in our print shop. Brother Martin Hardy, Trustee Martin Hardy, one of our directors, with his expertise in here, working untiringly. These two persons working so hard and working uh, next to the person that put this all together. And certainly when I was paying this young man's tuition at Wayne State University, I, I was grumbling a lot of times <laughs> when tuition was due and thought he wasn't doing nothing. <laughs> But thank God today, my son, Charles Ellis, put this all together. 
Mozart. Just stand by me. He worked. He was disappointed on a couple occasions because it didn't go through. But he didn't give up. He kept coming back. He kept coming back. He stayed right with it. And it has been done. Come on, give him a hand. Here it is. He did it. Thank you. Bless you. Hallelujah. I feel like running today. I don't know. said, you can't make me doubt. I know too much about it. My God, my God. Ah, thank you. Where's Teresa? I wanted to come sing for me right now. Great is thy faithfulness. Where, where is Teresa? Hey. Come and sing for me, my daughter. Directing the music. Pardon. Sing good. Great is thy faithfulness, oh God, my
I just want to share with you from the mailbox some testimonies of faith and healings and blessings from the Lord. Dear Bishop Ellis, I watched your televised program faithfully and I would like to take a little time to tell you how good it makes me feel when I'm feeling down. Also one of the good things the Lord has done for me. I thought I was in a great I thought I was in great health until I delivered my son four years ago and became very ill. I developed hypertension, a low blood count, and renal failure. I listened to the doctors talk in the hall at the hospital, about 50% chance they thought I had to survive. Also, one doctor stated he would only give me 10%. I prayed every day for the Lord to heal my body and thanked him for allowing me to wake up every morning. But it appeared my condition was getting worse. I had to go on, on to dialysis, the portable machine, so I could go home and use it. Also, I was given several blood transfusions. I still thank the Lord for keeping me alive. Two months later, I was scheduled for an antibody test for a kidney transplant. I refused. I told the doctors I knew my doctor was healing my body, and time would tell. They began to think my illness had become mentally and still scheduled me for the test. Well, a week before I was scheduled to go for my test, I was watching your program and listening to you sing my favorite song down through the years. God's been good to me. I felt the spirit move, and the next thing I knew, I danced from one end of the house to the other. Afterward, I began to make my dialysis change, and the bag was filling up with blood. I immediately called my doctor and was instructed to meet him at the hospital. Upon my arrival, my doctor was amazed when he saw the bag filled with blood and stated he did not want to tell me over the telephone my kidneys were functioning. He scheduled me for surgery to remove the catheter from my body and stated he had never had a case of reversal and could not understand what he had done. I thanked him for doing his job, but told him God and only God healed my body. My son was born healthy and is doing well as a typical four-year-old. I am much better and getting better every day by the grace of God. Keep up the good works and pray for me. In close with a small token of my appreciation, $100 from Sister D.S. Amen. Let us say thank the Lord. <laughs> to Bishop Ellis and the Greater Grace Temple family, praises to God from all whom blessings from whom all blessings flow. I've been viewing your TV broadcast for, the, for many years and have never written to you express my gratitude. I have been blessed by the choir singing and most of all by your anointed messages. They have inspired me when I was going through the valley and encouraged me when I am on the mountain. And just because my soul with the common touch and has blessed my soul, pardon me, with the common touch that you have in reaching the message in a positive way with a positive gospel, letting us know we can make it if we hold on to Jesus. I am saved and was filled with the Holy Ghost. I especially was blessed by your message concerning Magic Johnson and that, but for God's grace and mercy, we are not to think of ourselves more than we are, but for the grace of God, but by the grace of God, pardon me, I am sending a token of love to help the TV ministry. May God bless and strengthen you and keep you preaching the word in the power of the Holy Ghost. Sister L.T. here in Detroit. Amen. From another blessed child of God, it reads from the city of Chicago. What a blessing, Channel 62, Monday mornings, seem to, see, to see rather your wonderful service. And it is just like being there. The choir's beautiful renditions and song, the testimonies of the saints, expressing God's deliverances, miracles, and great healings, uh, wonders in their lives, and those of their families, I'm sure the response from the listening audience is tremendous and rewarding. New dimensions, new insight, new avenues, and spiritual guidance and strength will reflect from your nationwide ministry. May God's blessings, love, happiness, joy, peace, wisdom, good health, and prosperity increase and surround you. Uh, give Wilma, my regards, and your family comes from one of our listeners in Chicago, Sister M.H. Amen. Chicago 
is getting the message there. Chicago is getting the message. Another one says, Dear Bishop Ellis, my husband and I have been married four years and have no children. We went to a fertility specialist who gave me medication that was supposed to make me conceive. Well, I took that medication for a year and still no children. One Sunday morning while I was in Christian education class under Elder Graham, he said something that stuck to me like glue. <laughs> he said that a thousand years to us is like one day to the Lord. The Lord hears our cry. The first time we just, the first time we just have to be patient and wait on the Lord. Trust in him and lean not to our own understanding. Well, from that day to this one, I never took another pill, just trusted and waited on the Lord. During the month of consecration, one of the things that I asked the Lord for was to bear a child. Bishop, I remember you telling us that if we didn't believe the Lord was going to bless us, then there was no need to ask him. Bishop, I believe with all my heart that the Lord was going to bless me because he told me in St. John 15 and 7, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Praise the Lord. On January the 22nd, I went to the doctors for something totally different. And she ran some tests and told me that I was six weeks pregnant. Hallelujah. Praise him. Bishop, I was praying for a blessing. <laughs> and the work was already done. I would just like to tell my whole Greater Grace Temple family that whatever the problem, take it to the Lord in prayer. And Jesus will work it out. I know he can, and I know he will. Sister GD, don't tell me. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings and he had put a new song in my mouth lord have mercy even praise unto our god many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the lord Blessed is that man who maketh the Lord his trust, and respected not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are toward us. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offerings thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offerings and sin offerings hast thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Thank you, Jesus. I waited patiently. All we need is some patience. And everything's going to be all right. If we could just get some patience, things are going to work out. This psalm begins with the joy of Christ in resurrection in these first couple of verses he himself Jesus had been in the horrible pit of the grave but has been brought up thank God verses 3 to through 5 represents his resurrection testimony, his new song. Verses six through eight recognizes the retrospective things that happened in his life. Hallelujah. We must
just think about it today that there are times in our lives when we must take the writings of the messengers and apply them directly to us. Won't do any good to talk about Jesus' horrible pit until you know you have been in one and you've been brought out. And I think I got some people here that's been brought out. Amen. I have been brought out. Where is the joy today? Where is the happiness today? Where is the thankfulness today? Where is the new song? You're singing that same old song. You're wearing everybody out with that same old dead song. Where is the new song? Where is the song of praise and thankfulness from being brought out? We today have got to have God's song in our mouths. And we've got to come forth now singing as never before about the goodness of the Lord. And now is the time, as I've been preaching the last few weeks and telling you about the things that we read about, instructing you as saints of God to hold on because of the roughness of the, the outlook, the bleak outlook and the, the, the economy situation that looks bad. And, and things around you, jobs folding, and yes, you don't know who to vote for, you don't know who's going to do it, because you vote for somebody, and they told you, read my lips, and you read them, and just what they said they wasn't going to do, they did it, and now you're sitting back wondering, well, what, well, who is, or whatever. You know what God is trying to do for us? God is trying to tell us, put your faith and your confidence in me and in me alone. Thank God he's trying to tell us to put your faith in God. Children of God, if there ever was a time, this is it. We need to put our faith in God like we never have. And I'm looking at this today. Every one of us in this room should be jumping to our feet more or less with the gladness of the heart and the thankfulness coming from the lips, thanking God from where he brought us. Hallelujah. Thanking God for bringing us out of that horrible pit, yes, out of the pit of sin and trouble, yes, the pit of maliciousness, the pit of evil thoughts and things that came to trouble us from time to time. I don't know about you, but it's a good thing today, and I'm glad to be free. I'm glad to be delivered. I'm glad to be a child of the King. Amen. I'm happy, and there ain't nobody, and I do mean nobody, that can steal or take from me what God has done. Because you see, when God delivers you, when God brings you out, you have every right to praise. You should not sit here with a dead look or a dead attitude, but you ought to be thankful. Oh, hallelujah. When God delivers you, and you may not be all the way out, but if you got one foot out, my God, if you got an arm sticking through the door, if you got your head out and the rest of your body's in, you ought to be thanking him right now that, hey, wait a minute. I might not have it all, but I'm going to thank him for the little bit I already got. Well, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to thank him for the victory. I'm going to thank him for from time to time. Amen, what he's doing for me. And I'm telling you, I don't know how far I can go, but thank God I've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word, he's never failed me yet. And I think I'm talking to a room full of folks who knows that God will never fail you. 
there ain't a person under the sound of my voice that can point your finger at God and say, God, you have let me down. I dare you to raise your little finger and point to God in that way, for you are losing out right now to say that God has failed you. God has never failed you. Am I right about it? Nobody. Nobody, nobody can say God has let me down. But everybody in this room today, you can be ecstatically happy because God has given you grace to stand. God has given you faith. God has given you wisdom. God has given you a measure of knowledge that you can stand in these evil days. And I want you now to get yourself together and come out with a strong testimony. Time out for these fighting testimonies. Fighting everybody and trying to get back at somebody and trying to belittle somebody. But come on out now and tell somebody that God brought me out. He delivered me out of a horrible pit. I, I, I call on the Lord. He heard my cry and he inclined his ear he heard me and delivered me and brought me up out of this horrible pit come on and praise the Lord hallelujah hallelujah I say God knows how to deliver and God will deliver I say God will deliver God will set you free if those of you here and you're still bound you ought to know that God will set you free if God is still here like I know he's here then you ought to be glad for Jesus you ought to rejoice in Jesus you ought to thank Jesus and tell everybody that this God is the real God he's the righteous God and he only has done in my life what has been done and I'm going to thank him I'm going to praise him and I'm going to bless him and I'm going to hallelujah when the message is coming forth we've got to learn to praise God and get ourselves together and just come on and bless him am I in the right church here my God you know we're not fighting against flesh and blood y'all know that we're fighting against spiritual wickedness the rulers and the powers of the darkness of this world hallelujah ah uh, none of you in here is the devil no 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 but you can be used by the devil you see the lord can or the lord allows the devil to attack your mind and your heart and you see that's what the devil wants anyhow he wants your mind See, if the devil can work in your mind, do y'all hear what I'm saying? If he can get in your mind, he's got you, honey. But you got to keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Come on, church. You got to keep your mind on Jesus. Oh, because the devil here is reeling and rocking and getting in folks and will have them disturbing anything. The devil will put you to sleep at preaching time. He'll get you to walking at preaching time. But this message must go forth because I've got some folks in this room that's ready to jump to their feet and say, the Lord, he heard my cry. Hallelujah. The Lord, he delivered me. That's what I like about it. When David said, I went to the Lord and he heard my supplication and he brought me up out of a horrible pit. He established my going. He put a new song in my mouth and his praises begin to shoot forth from my lips. Listen, church, it's praising time. I said it's praising time and I got to stop you. But before I quit, I just want you to know it's praising time. God told me to tell you, as I told you last Sunday night, let's get 
get away from sensationalism. Let's get away from fantasies. But let's start praising him. And I feel right now is a good time to just start praising the Lord. Hey, glory. Right now is the time to just tell the devil, I ain't singing that old song no more. I ain't singing that. That old dead tune, but the Lord put a new song in my mouth. The Lord brought me a long ways, and I ain't going back. I'm thankful. I'm happy. I'm shouting the victory. Look where He brought me from. He brought me out of darkness, put me in the marvelous light. Look at what God. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Y'all know what I'm saying. Hey! 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you where you brought me from, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. It's time to praise him. It's time to thank him. You don't know like I know. Hallelujah. Yesterday this time, I couldn't hardly open my mouth. Friday night, I couldn't hardly talk. Thank you, Jesus. But today, I had to tell Satan, get thee behind. I know, I know, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is already yours. I dare you to praise him. I just came out today. I didn't know what I could do, but I came out to give God. somebody and say, neighbor, neighbor, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. He healed me when I was sick, when I was down. He picked me up when the devil said I was going to be destroyed. God stepped in. Sound! 
victory. I got the victory. I got it. Look at him and tell him victory. Today is mine. I told Satan, you better get behind. But victory, today is mine. Hallelujah. Put your hands together.